we have people come from around the world, uh, around the United States, around the world. They come to this building to have hands laid on them so they can receive healing. And we're going to acknowledge that. Now, the, we have two services uh, on Sunday, 9 a.m. and then at 10 a.m. The 10 a.m. is generally a longer service because it's not time-constrained. One of the things that we've noticed is that when people are coming for healing, uh, the Holy Spirit wants to meet their needs. And so whenever we save, put off, or whatever you want to say it, the healing service until the 10 a.m., then the message tends to pull toward healing. And that doesn't necessarily have to be so. So what we have done is we have now uh, instituted the 9 a.m. as a healing service. It will be a healing service pretty much every Sunday. Now they're, you know, barring God wanting to do something specific, okay, other than what we're doing. But so what we're going to do is every Sunday morning for about 20, 25 minutes, I'm going to teach on healing. Then we will minister healing to whoever is there at that time. Now, uh, it's going to take a little bit of time for this to get known, obviously. So we'll have to do a little bit of both in both services uh, to be able to minister healing, because that's normally what we do at the end of the 10 a.m. is when we normally minister to people. So uh, we will do it kind of both, but we're going to be pushing it toward the 9 o'clock service. All right? So now if you came for healing and you need healing, uh, then we're going to go ahead and pass out the ministry cards now. And when we do that, so if you need healing and you want us to lay hands on you, then go ahead and raise your hand, and we will get a card to you and let you know. Uh, matter of fact, when you get the card, go ahead and fill it out right away, all right? Fill it out right away, and then we will minister to you at the end. Like I said, we'll probably be doing close to 20, 25-minute teaching somewhere through there. Now, I'm not going to try to just regulate it and do it perfectly every time, but uh, that will, should give us about 20 to 25 minutes to minister to everyone. And honestly, as I told a pastor friend of mine one time, we went to a hospital, and he kind of ran block for me. In other words, the uh, doctors and nurses didn't really like us coming in there, and so they would try to stop us. And whenever they saw us, they would come out toward us, and he would go to them and talk to them, and I'd just walk right on past. And so I'd go to the room where we were going to minister to people, and many times, by the time he got there, and was starting to take off his coat, I was already done. Already ministered to the person, person healed, usually. Uh, and he walks in, is taking off his coat, and this, everything's done. And uh, it was funny, because on the way out, he said, man, that, that didn't take long at all. And, I, and it just kind of blurted out. I wasn't thinking about it. But I said, well, it doesn't take long when you know what you're doing. <laughs> then I realized how that sounded, and I'm kind of like, well, you know what I mean. I, said, you know, I tried to soften it a little bit. But that's a fact. Uh, because whatever reason you're sick, doesn't matter. Right? Uh, how you got it, doesn't matter. Now, now, if it was through sin, then stop it. Don't do it again. Don't go back into it, all right? At the same time, if it, for whatever other reason. Now, if there is a reason, you want to find out necessarily, you know, because it could be all kinds of things. It could be physical things. It could be spiritual things. Okay, it could be natural. It could be spiritual. And so, and as you follow the teaching healing that we do, um, concerning healing, I should say, the teaching concerning healing, then you'll learn to spot why some things happen. All right, people call it open doors or all that kind of stuff, and I really don't go along those lines. Uh, basically, it's just knowing how the enemy operates and you doing what you need to do to keep them out. Right. So, this morning, I'm going to look at a couple of things here. Uh, first off, I'm going to ask you a question. Now, we're going to try to get into a couple of scriptures here. Well, we will. We'll definitely get into them. But before we get there, I'm going to ask you just a couple of questions. Number one, and you don't have to answer this out loud, right? I just want you to think about it because there's a point behind it all. Number one, when did Jesus pay for your salvation? That would have been on the cross. Is that right? cross. Now, that's the primary aspect of it. Uh, before that was even in the garden, because that's where he shed drops of blood because of anguish, 
which means that the chastisement of your peace was upon him, and that's when he paid for that, so to speak. The whipping post was where he paid for your physical healing. Is that correct? Because it said, by his stripes, you were healed. By his stripes. It doesn't even say, by your faith. It says, by his stripes. Now, your faith is what allows him to get the payment that he paid to you. Does that make sense? But your faith doesn't heal you. Okay, His stripes healed you 2,000 years ago. And at some point, you heard that, decided to believe it, and then received your healing. That would be the process. Now, the reason I'm saying this is because I want to emphasize uh, that if I ask you, when did Jesus pay for your salvation, or when did he pay for your sins, you would say on the cross, and that would be accurate. Now, the, but the idea behind this is this. He paid for it. It was done. Now, but then if I ask you, when did you get saved? You might say, well, I got saved on, you know, July 21st and whatever year, whatever. Well, that's when you received what had been paid for, right? So he had already paid for your salvation. Now, you weren't saved technically then. He paid for it then. Then you received what he paid for at a later date. Is that right? And that's how you got saved. But now the, the payment, so to speak, for salvation, for your deliverance and freedom from sin, was paid for on the cross 2,000 years ago. But you still have to receive for yourself what he did for you. You have to accept his substitute. Is that right? So now a lot of people, well, not a lot of people, used to more than now, but there was always some confusion about ministering healing as opposed to, quote-unquote, ministering salvation. Now, to be very honest, the word salvation includes healing. So technically, now please hear what I'm saying. I am, well, hear what I'm saying, okay? <clears throat> Full salvation includes freedom from sin, sickness, Everything that is included in the term salvation, which means, which the very term salvation means deliverance, healing, prosperity, uh, means to prosper. Uh, whenever you get healed in your body, your body is prospering. So when we say prosperity, it doesn't mean money all the time, right? Now, it can include that. But you have to understand, the word salvation technically includes every aspect of God's dealings with man. Because he's always trying to get us saved. Now, if you are freed from your sins, and yet you're sick, then according to biblical terminology, you are not completely saved. Does that make sense? Now, I'm not saying you're going to hell, all right? I'm not saying that at all. As a matter of fact, if you don't believe in healing and you don't practice divine healing, you may get to heaven faster than some of the rest of us, okay? <laughs> Just saying, all right? Now, but the point is, is that Jesus did both, or I should say even all three. He, okay, man's fall was a total fall, spirit, soul, and body. Jesus' redemption was a total redemption, spirit, soul, and body. Amen? So whatever aspect, now that's the only three parts of you there is, is spirit, soul, and body. Everything falls under those categories. So whatever part is not in right union with God, functioning the way that God wants it to function, that part has not received full salvation yet. Does that make sense? Okay, I just want to make sure you understand that I'm not saying if you're sick that you know, necessarily you're in sin or that you're you know, going to go to hell when you die, that kind of thing. I'm not saying that at all. Now, so in saying this aspect of it, uh, when we have ministered healing, because if you've been around long and you've heard what we teach concerning healing, which we verify through the Bible, we've done it all over the world, so it's a fact, okay? And whenever we, many times when we present it, we present it from an aspect of the fact that we can be aggressive toward sickness and disease and bring healing to people, honestly, even people that don't want it. When you say, well, why wouldn't they want it? I don't know. People are strange. Okay? 
I don't know why they would. But it's amazing. You start talking about things and they'll fight you. They will argue with you over <clears throat> whether they should be healed or not. And it's them that are sick. It is really amazing. <clears throat> now, when we bring healing to people like that, and we say, well, I can set you free. Why? Because Jesus said, who I lay hands on, they shall recover. Right? Simple as that. So I, I can bring healing to you. It doesn't say you have to want it. It doesn't, have to, it doesn't say you have to have faith for it. Now, we want you to have faith. We want everybody to have faith. But there's a difference in us wanting you to have it and you having to have it for you to get healed. Right? Now, if you're going to get healed on your faith, obviously, you need faith. If you're going to get healed on somebody else's faith, they can have faith for you. Now, that's good news because, now see, if that were not true, no dead could be raised. Right? Because honestly, the dead person isn't laying there in faith. They're lying there in death. <laughs> okay, you get that? And so they're not having faith toward that. People are sometimes in comas and things like that. Now, I will tell you, I know for a fact, I've, I've seen this, I've proven it out, Many people in comas, some hear you, some don't. Sometimes they will actually hear the things that people are saying around them. And so there's aspects of it. So a person like that could have faith, but you wouldn't know. Why? Because they're in a coma, right? Or let's say they are totally and completely paralyzed. Then you wouldn't know what faith they have necessarily because they cannot exhibit it or demonstrate it or communicate it. So is all this making sense to you? So what I'm saying is that because of God's word, we can bring healing to people and deliver it regardless of what the person thinks. Why? Because we have authority and dominion over all sickness, disease, demons, all these things, right? And whether sickness is caused by problems, by an accident, or any other situation or demonic uh, you know, entities, we have authority over those situations, so it doesn't matter how you got sick. Some people get sick from an accident because the accident makes them lay up in bed for a while or something, and then sometimes they'll develop pneumonia from having laid in bed too long and you know, other things develop. So there's a lot of different reasons why people can get sick. But what we have to remember is that just because a person gets sick does not mean they committed a sin. The old idea of, well, if a person's sick, it means that they must have sinned. Now, it, you can sin and get sick. But just because you're sick doesn't mean you have sinned. Does that make sense? It's good. See, we, sometimes we lump it all together. Now, and then you would have people say, well, but if healing is part of salvation and you say you can give it to anyone, then you could give salvation to someone and we know you can't just make somebody get saved. True. Why? But see, there's a difference between that aspect of salvation, or let's say the healing aspect of salvation, and the eternal life aspect. And that difference is this. To get eternal life, it has to be an act of your will to submit yourself to God and make Jesus Lord of your life. Healing doesn't require that. Right? God has healed a lot of people that were sinners, remain sinners, still sinners, okay? Still, and I'm talking about good at sinning, all right? Uh, they didn't turn, and whenever they face God, God's going to tell them, you knew that I healed you. You knew you really got healed. You knew it was me that healed you. So I demonstrated all of this to you, and you still didn't turn. So now you are more guilty because of it. Does that make sense? Now, so, I want to look at a couple of things. Now, so again, Jesus paid for your healing at the whipping post 2,000 years ago. Jesus paid for your salvation, eternal life, put it that way, 2,000 years ago on the cross, you know, whenever he redeemed us from our sins, all right? Now, at some point, hopefully, you heard the truth of the gospel, or heard the true gospel, could put it that way, and you decided to make Jesus Lord, and at that point, you received the benefit of the payment Jesus made 2,000 years ago. Now, in that sense, it is exactly the same with healing. 
that 2,000 years ago, by his stripes you were healed. It was paid for. It was done. God's time for your healing was 2,000 years ago. Even before you got here, his will was your healing. Right? Now, if you knew that growing up from a child, you could literally live your entire life without sickness or disease, which is God's plan. Now, there are some things that you may have to suffer in this world, but sickness and disease and anything else that Jesus paid for for you, to, paid for you, you don't have to suffer those things, right? Now, you may have to suffer persecution. You may have to suffer some tribulation, but you do not have to suffer sickness and disease. You do not have to suffer hell. Why? Because Jesus paid for you so you don't have to suffer those things. Amen? Now, all right, let's look at some scripture. Now, this is going to be pretty simple, and I'm doing pretty good here. Okay, yeah, so far. All right. Now, we have this card. We have some of them, and it is called I'm Healed. These are in the foyer and the little thing out there. And so we got some of them. I don't know how many we got. We will have plenty from now on. Now, uh, it says, I am healed. And in it, there are scriptures, and they all start. What it is is we have a statement, and then uh, it has a scripture that goes along with it. Now, if you came for healing, I highly encourage you to get one of these and to be able to uh, go through it. Now, once we go through it, I'm going to go through it here. Then we're going to call you forward. I'm going to minister to you. Now, you have to remember, the Bible says that a believer shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Now, that word recover, don't let it throw you. Recovery can be 30 seconds, or it can be an hour, right? It can be real quick. It doesn't have to take long. There are some things sometimes that take a little bit of time. Some things, you can be healed instantly, but because it's internal, your body has to go through more or less a complete cycle before you can recognize that things are different. Okay, sometimes, let's say if you have a food allergy and we minister to you, then you can test that out pretty quick. You can just go eat what it is you couldn't eat before and you'll find out real quick if you were healed or not. Amen? Now, every time we've ever done that, why did well, I say done that? Every time we've ever ministered to somebody that had the food allergy, I generally sometimes didn't even lay hands on them, but many times I spoke and just said, go eat what you couldn't eat. And they'd go do it and so far, 100%, they were healed, right? And I even did that to a crowd, to a, a, a crowd in the uh, National Guard Armory where we were doing a meeting. And there was probably six, 700 people there, I guess, pretty close to it. And uh, I told them just before lunch, I said, hey, how many of you have food allergies? There were a lot of hands that went up. I was surprised. I did, you know, which is probably why the Holy Spirit moved me to even ask that, because there was a good number of people that had it. And I said, all right, go eat what you couldn't eat. I said, if you go eat what you couldn't eat, you'll be healed. And they went back, and afterwards we had a testimony service. Lines of people coming across, talking about what they couldn't eat and what they did eat, and then they, got, they knew that they were healed because they could eat it and there were no reactions. And so we have seen that. Now, I didn't pray. The Bible didn't say anything about pray. Now, it does say lay hands on a sick, and you can do that. It also shows that Jesus healed by a word of command. That's what he told the lepers. Go, your, go show yourself. Isn't that right? And he told the blind man, go wash. And they were obedient, and the healing occurred. So there's all kinds of different ways we can minister. Now, generally in these services on Sunday morning, we're going to be ministering through the laying on of hands, not through the prayer. Okay? Uh, Mark 16 has nothing to do with prayer. It does not say pray. It says, lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So that's what we're going to do. Now, it does not say how long to lay hands on the sick. So we're not going to stand there for 45 minutes just putting our hand on you and letting it seep out. Okay? We're going to touch. We're going to lay hands. Bam. And that's what's going to happen. At that point, we have done our part. God is going to do his part. You'll be healed. Amen? Amen. Now, <clears throat> so first off, we're going to go through these scriptures Fairly quick. Now, do y'all have a copy of this or at least a form of it? Has it been passed around? Ah, oh, good deal. They, they got them done. Good deal. Okay. All right. First one there. It says, I am healed because Psalm 103 verse 3 says so. Now, that's a key point. If the scripture says it, it's a fact. 
Isn't that right? Matter of fact, it's beyond fact. It's truth. Truth is stronger than fact. Psalm 103, verse 3 says, Who forgives all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. Now, how can he say that? Well, because he knew, Isaiah 53, according to Isaiah 53, that Jesus was going to bear our sins and our sicknesses in his body on that tree and at that whipping post. Amen? Does that make sense? So, the fact is, the truth is, who forgives that we could say. Matter of fact, just say this with me. Say, I'm healed. I am healed. Because Psalm 103.3 says. So. Because Psalm 103.3 says. Okay. Now, the next one, I am healed because 1 Peter 2.24 says so. I am healed because 1 Peter 2.24 says so. And 1 Peter 2.24 says this, Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. Now, now, the thing to remember about this is very simple. And a lot of people say, well, see, that was, he was talking about sins. So he says when we were healed, then he's talking about sin, not, not physical healing. Okay, well, two problems with that. Uh, first off, uh, that's not two separate things. That was, he was saying whenever your sins were paid for, then also at the same time, same time period, whipping post cross, then your diseases were also paid for, and by his stripes you were healed. Now, it says here, by his stripes, okay? That's the whipping. So by his stripes, you were healed. Now, and the other problem with this, uh, with people saying that that was a uh, spiritual healing of your, you know, your spirit and not physical healing, is the fact that this scripture was also uh, made a point of in uh, Matthew chapter 8, and it said that he healed all that were sick so that it might be fulfilled that which was spoken by the prophet Isaiah. And then he quoted how he bore our sins and our sicknesses in his own body. And so it, the fact that Jesus physically healed the sick, he didn't just spiritually heal people there. It was physical healing, and they tied that to Isaiah 53. And so 1 Peter 2.24 is talking about forgiveness of sins and physical healing. All right? So I'm just giving you some facts about this. Now, I'm, I'm giving you this so you have it to take with you. You have this to take with you. So that even after we minister to you, you can use these to stay well. Amen? You read it. You look at it. You believe it. Then that life is in you and you can remain healthy. So, number three. I, repeat this after me. I am healed because Isaiah 53, 4 and 5 says so. I am healed So now what does Isaiah 53, 4 and 5 say? Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Now that's the King James Version. In the Hebrew of that, it means sickness and disease. The words there used is sickness and disease. Now I like griefs and sorrows because that makes it even wider because sickness and disease is sickness and disease. But if you say griefs and sorrows, well, guess what? If you're sick or have a disease, you have grief and sorrow. But you might also have grief and sorrow without having sickness or disease. So it's even broader to say he has borne our griefs and our sorrows, which includes what? Everything, spirit, soul, and body. Now, it says, uh, Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. And notice here, he's talking about physical healing at this point. Now, all right, let's keep going. Repeat this after me. I am healed because Psalm 107, verse 20 says so. I am healed because Psalm 107, verse 20 says so. Psalm 107, verse 20 says, He sent His Word. Now, who's the Word He sent? Jesus. Did, did He send Jesus? Okay, so He sent Jesus, and then Jesus returned to Him. And his word, Jesus, cannot return to him void. It has to first accomplish what he sent it to do. Right? So, he sent his word, Jesus, and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. So now he says not only did he heal them, but he also delivered them from their destructions. So, it even goes further than just healing. Now again, I'm healed because Psalm 91 says so. 
He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God. In Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler, from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover you with His feathers, and under His wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler, that's defenses and weapons, Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flies by day, nor for the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall you. How many of you know sickness and disease is evil? Neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. Now notice that's your whole dwelling. That doesn't just say you. That's, that, that's your place. Amen? It says, for he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. He didn't even want you stubbing your toe. You get that? Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder. The young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. Because he has set his love upon me, Therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. Now, do you know? There you go. You know his name. Amen. <laughs> so he's going to set you on high right there. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him. What is that saying? You ain't going to die. He's going to deliver you. Amen. And honor him with long life. Will I satisfy him and show him my salvation? Amen. Amen. Now you say, well, what is long life? I don't know. You decide. <laughs> when you figure you've been here long enough, then you decide to go. Amen. But don't go out with sickness or disease. Amen. That doesn't glorify God. Next one. I'm healed because Mark eleven twenty three 23 says so. I am healed because Mark eleven twenty three 23 says so. For verily I say unto you, you, that whosoever... That's you so ever, right? Shall say unto this mountain, this mountain of cancer, this mountain of disease, right? Be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. It's pretty simple. I am healed because one, Psalm 107 verse 2 says so. I am healed. It says there, let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Are you redeemed? Yes. Then say so. Yes. And you've been redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Yes. What's in the enemy's hand? Sickness and disease. What's in God's hands? Health, life, peace. Amen. Next one. I am healed because Matthew 12, 15 says I can be healed. Go ahead. And Hebrews 13, 8 says, Jesus hasn't changed. And Hebrews 13, 8 says, Jesus hasn't changed. But when Jesus knew it, he withdrew himself from thence, and great multitudes followed him, and he healed them all. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. If he ever healed all, he's still healing all, or he's not the same. Next one, I am healed because Luke 9, 11 says Jesus healed all that had need and Jesus hadn't changed. I am healed because Luke 9, 11 says Jesus healed all that had need and Jesus hadn't changed. Amen. All right. And the people, when they knew it, followed him and he received them and spoken to them of the kingdom of God and healed them that had need of healing. Amen. Amen. So what does that tell you? You don't have to have special faith. You don't have to have anything other than a need. So if you need healing, he wants to heal all. Amen. Amen. Now, here's the thing. See, this is what makes it so simple. 
You either believe the word or you don't. Now, here's the good news. Even if you don't, I do. <laughs> and because I believe it and my trust is in him, see, my, my faith is not in healing. My faith is in the healer. My faith is in God who heals. And if my faith is in him to heal, my faith in him will work for you. Amen? Amen. So if you have need of healing, now uh, you've got the cards. Hopefully you filled them out. And we've got about 14 minutes, right? And you say, well, well what if it takes longer? Why would it? You, you act like that disease is somehow a big thing to God. Amen. Come on. God can He just flick it away. Amen? It ain't a problem to him. So if you need healing, then I'm going to go ahead and tell you, come on down front right now. Let's make this quick. We're going to lay hands on you. We're going to release our faith. We're going to release the power of God that dwells in us, and you're going to be healed. Amen? So let's just line up right across the front, right there. Just make a line right across the front. There you go. Perfect. And let's stay back just a little bit because I'm going to have to step down from here. All right, let's line up really quick. One of the things I've noticed is that Two things. If I play music that is fast, that, you know, gospel music I'm talking about, uh, fast and sometimes loud, and then it helps stir me up. Now, that's just one of the things I've done. Now, there are other songs, slow songs, that stir me up also. <clears throat> but what I've also noticed is that the faster the music is, the faster I move. <laughs> okay? It's kind of like dancing. I ain't even going to go there. Anyway. Um, okay, yeah. At the same time, the faster, and this is things we've seen around the world, and it's proven to be true, the faster I can move, the more powerful the healings occur. Why? Because God gets all the glory. And we don't get into psychology. We don't get into, well, now, when did this start? How did it do to And all that kind of way. I see, I'm not the healer. I just carry him. Amen? And so... Whenever we release him and get, all right, he's just waiting to jump on you, okay, and knock that thing out of you. And I'm not going to knock it out of you. He may knock it out of you. If you fall, that's on you, okay? I don't push people down or any of that kind of stuff. But uh, it has happened before to where people have fallen. But falling doesn't get you healed. Amen? It's his power. So now we're just going to minister to you very quickly. So now, if, can we go ahead and collect the cards? Go ahead and, go ahead and collect the cards. Go ahead and collect them if you can. And you know what? It, now, has everybody, you, you don't have a card. We need a card. Okay. And, that's, and you need a card. Who else needs a card? We need some cards. Okay. Okay. If you, now, if you're just now getting a card, why don't we do this? Why don't, why don't you step down to this end and we'll just rotate you out and go put you at the end of the line. That's okay because, you know, first will be last, last first. That's the way it works. Okay. So if you have just received a card, I'm going to give you time to fill it out. So just go ahead and step down to that end of the line. I know that's different because I'm going to start at this end. So step down to that end. Just step down there and fill it out and get it ready. And everybody just kind of scooch on down here this way a little bit and give them room. And let's line them up. So everybody down here has a card. Is that right? Everybody ready? Yeah, well, until he took it, right? Okay. <laughs> so go ahead and take them. And by the time we get down there, he will take those also, All right? Now, do we have the uh, music? Let's do it, okay? First, Father, I just thank you that you're a God that heals. I thank you for Jesus. He's the same yesterday, today, forever. We thank you for what he's going to do today because he's already paid for it, so this is a done deal. So, Father, I thank you for it. Right now, in the name of Jesus, according to your word, I'm a believer and I lay hands on the sick. And according to your word, you said the sick shall recover. They're going to be healed. And, Father, we know you're so big, it's going to be quick. Amen. And we know it's going to be total because God doesn't do halfway things. Amen. All right. So let's get started. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Whatever it is, if you notice changes going on in the body and you can tell something has happened to you, then we want you to let one of the staff know. Right. You can let Justin know. Just talk to him and say, here's what happened. Here's what's going on. Here's what was happening. And here's the way it is now. Now, listen. This isn't a game, this isn't play, and this is not a ritual, right? We do this because the Word of God says so, and it works because the Word of God says so. And so we expect 
to see changes. We expect you to recognize the changes. Amen? So whatever it is during the service, if whatever it was you couldn't do before, just begin doing. Amen? Amen. Pretty simple, right? Why? It's God. Amen? It's not about what we're doing, per se. We're just being obedient. It's simple. Faith in God is simple. It's not hard. Amen? Amen. All right. Well, we're going to take about a 15-minute break. So if you want to get up and get around and move and check it out and talk to people and meet people, um, if you want to go into the bookstore, I don't even know if the bookstore is open or not, but anyway. And you can go out to the uh, foyer out there and grab one of these if you need one, if you don't have one. But uh, get a hold of one, take it with you, and just start going over it. Meditate on it. Think about it. Speak it to yourself, right? Man, there's several people you need to read this to. You need to read it to yourself. You need to read it to the devil. <clears throat> you can read it out to the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. You got a whole crowd of people that you can quote this to. Amen? All right. Well, God bless you, and we will be back in just a moment. All right. God bless. Hello, I'm Curry Blake, and I want to thank you for watching today's program. I hope it's been a blessing to you. And there are a couple of things I want to mention to you very quickly. Now, of course, you can find out all we're doing around the world by going to our website, which is just simply jglm.org. You can find all of the churches that we have around the country and around the world. You can find out pretty much everything about us. You can go there and look uh, to see the schedule page, see where we're going to be, because we're going to be all over this year. We've got... Uh, scheduling literally all over the country and even some outside of the country dates coming up. So uh, we're excited about it. But remember, if you're in the Dallas area, that's our headquarters church. We would love to have you come by and visit. Uh, I'd like to meet you. If your home is in the Dallas area, we would like to, you to consider uh, this being your home church. Now, also, we, I do want to mention a couple of things very quickly. And I do appreciate you giving me the time here to come into your home or wherever you're watching from. Uh, but if you want to know what our schedule is, like I said, you can go to the jglm.org website. Schedule is right there and find out if we're going to be anywhere in your area. Uh, also, two other things you need to know about. One is the JGLM app, which is the ministry app, which everything is directed right towards you. You can get information. You can watch live broadcast. It's the best, fastest way to find out what's going on. And it's a quick way for me to get information to you. Now, secondly on that, uh, we also have the JGLM TV, and that has an archive of all that we uh, have recorded in times past, the different teachings. There is a lot on there, a whole lot of older stuff, too, that you can go back and see some of our historical archives. Uh, so definitely check out the JGLM TV. Now, lastly, or second to last, I should say, we have what we call life teams. And our life teams are simply what most people think of as small groups, almost like cell groups. But the difference is this. With a life team, you come to a life team to learn to grow so you can go. The idea is we train and equip you in the life teams to go out onto the streets and go out in the marketplace, the grocery stores, you, where you can minister healing and deliverance to anyone, anywhere, at any time, for anything. Now, that's where you learn to train. To see, it's in the small groups like that that the training takes place. And so we want to make sure that you are well trained and equipped. And then, of course, last, I want to mention to you, if you would consider becoming a partner with us, we would definitely appreciate it. It's our partners that God uses to get this message around the world. So think about it, pray about it, decide what you want to do. We don't have a, a different categories of partners. We don't have a set amount. Whatever you believe you want to do in your heart, you purpose in your heart to help us get this message out. Other than that, I'd say God bless you. Hope you watch again soon. We're on every day. So again, God bless you. See you next time. We here at JJLM are excited to be a part of your growth as you prepare yourself to fulfill the call that Jesus has on your life. While we fully expect these 25 minute teachings to provide a solid foundation, there is much more that is left out due to the time constraints of network television. We have extensive resources available to keep you equipped and trained for every situation that can and will arise in your life. 
We would like to invite you to connect with us for access to these teachings and resources that we know to be necessary for victorious living. We also offer JJLM TV. JJLM TV is a video streaming service with over 1,000 videos available. There is a free to watch category that requires no account or payment and offers our core teachings in multiple languages. You can also become a monthly subscriber for access to our entire library that includes teachings not found anywhere else. For our partners, access to the full JGLM TV library is an included benefit. To learn more about JGLM TV, please visit jglmmedia.com or the App Store on your mobile device and download JGLM TV for free. Visit jglm.org to learn more about Curry's schedule, life teams, partner benefits, and how to access our free resources, training videos, and downloads. Lastly, we would like to thank our partners for making all of this possible. Because of your diligent giving, we are able to continue our mission of giving God's children the tools to change the world. Hey guys, hey, I just wanted to welcome you. I'm Curry Blake, uh, General Overseer of John G. Lake Ministries. We are so glad that you have decided to take the step to investigate life teams, becoming a certified divine healing technician, getting plugged in and taking the responsibility to enter into the life that Jesus has actually died to give us. So the next step now, since you've come this far, is to simply sign up. It is a new day and you get to get right into it. So sign up, do it now, don't wait, do it now, and then check your email box. It's just that simple. So listen, I really appreciate this. Jesus appreciates this because you're plugging in and you're wanting to take responsibility. So I look forward to working with you. We're gonna have a great time advancing the kingdom. God bless you. Beloved, be blessed.